Good morning, lady ladies and gentlemen. This is Napoleon Total back with some Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai Scrambled 4 to 4 East mod, and we're back with the Qing Empire. As you can see in our last episode, to be exact, um, we have basically destroyed uh, Korean army, and now we are somewhat trapped in Japan. Um, there's another Korean army coming out um, from the mist, and we are having to deal with that. Um, in Japan, we are getting uh, somewhat um, destroyed after the last battle, in which we basically took um, Pyrrhic losses. Um, um, I'm going to be sieging Gang um, the capital of Korea, which is Seoul. Okay, 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 that helps. Uh, Seoul. I'm just going to be calling this problem Seoul. And now we're going to be assaulting Seoul because I am impatient to take down the capital. Um, as you can see in the background, our, um, our rockets are being fired. The first time I'm going to be using rockets on the battlefield. Uh, my guys are, uh, are using Marine Belts, which is um, Green Belt Archers, which is Han Chinese Archers. Behind them we have some uh, Qing, uh, Qing Blue Banner, wait sorry, no, Qing Blue Border Banner Arquebusiers. Followed by some more Arquebusiers, followed by some uh, yellow border banner uh, Chang Spearmen, followed by some red border banner Spearmen, and a lot more Spearmen. As you can see, our our uh, our missiles are being fired at the enemy. And yes, this is my first time using rockets in battle um, against in that is a not a multiplayer battle. And I find out that rockets are pretty devastating in. Um, campaign not so much a multiplayer for some reason but I guess uh, one more volley where you're gonna see the rockets open fire I'll help with my mortars by the way um, I have two one unit of mortars two units of rockets and uh, we're gonna fire that's pretty awesome Anyway, um, we can see the devastation that is racking up on this Korean, um, this, the Korean fortress. Our rockets, they don't do actual damage, they start a fire, and as you can already think, the second it starts fire, the gate will burn down, and the second the gate, well, the, the part of the fortress that has been set on fire will start to burn down, and after it starts to burn down, the, fort will, uh, the part that has been set on fire will get destroyed, and after it gets destroyed, men will start flying into the air. Um, I hope that explanation was good. Um, I, I think this will happen very soon. Uh, you can see rockets are being fired at the enemies. Uh, and you can see it's uh, starting fires. And the second the fires get to 100%, fire damage goes to 100%, it will explode. Uh, I think you can see one right now. <laughs> yes, um, these men are flying into the air because that uh, fire damage has reached 100 and after it reaches 100, um, it will explode. So yes. Anyway, um, starting to realize how overpowered rockets are, but we're just going to be using them en masse against this core unit. I'm going to be targeting that part of the wall that is, has been, um, in the end of that corner of the wall, I guess you can see. And we're going to be firing rockets. I like how all the buildings have a decaying process of how fire, how fire, how fire it's burned. It's pretty unique. Um, yeah, so, um, yes. Once again, very nice mod by the mod developers. Um, also, um, I have to put it out there, I've been watching my, um, watching my subscriptions. I've gotten 100 subscriptions, so thank you guys. Um, I hope you guys keep it up. And I'm um, just thankful for that. Um, at this point, it's more like some, what, 110, 101? Um, one second, let me pull my subscription number up. It's 100 and... It's 111. <laughs> 111. So, but anyway, thank you very guys, guys very much for um, all the support that you've given me. And yes, you mean a lot to me, by the way. Um, that's that. Um, but anyway, back to the campaign, um, back to the battle, as a matter of fact, the siege of Seoul, our guys are literally burning uh, parts of the wall, and at this point, a certain time period will pass, and the wall will literally explode and send these men to death. <sighs> How wonderful is that? It is very wonderful indeed, as men are flying through the air. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
Um, what else is there to talk about? No, nothing really much else. As my troops start running through, running to the hills, my guys are gonna be using um, fire by rank formation, as you can really see. But for some, uh, but for obvious reasons, the enemy gets their first shots off, which is happening right here. Um, this armor is not gonna protect them from uh, gunshots, and we're gonna be using fire by rank. And after that comes the extremely long process of reloading this um, matchlock. And yes, um, this matchlock was once again 300 years ago. Um, literally Portuguese matchlocks. I think actually no, no actually no. These are not Portuguese matchlocks. These are um, um, I, if I my memory serves correct, um, China had a system of making their own guns like like the Japanese. Um, they're very good at it, like the Japanese. Um, but yes, they they have their own set of match locks. So yes, as you can see, my my uh, my uh, green green standard bowmen are going to be pushing up, and we're going to use be using our arrows. Which I I come to find out that early match locks, you might as well just deploy uh, bowmen. And the reason is simply because uh, match locks they literally do zero to no damage, uh, even in point blank range, which which is to my surprise. You might as well just use uh, bowmen. And this is what I'm gonna be doing. And um, yes, yeah, so we're gonna be firing our bows across the across the uh, over the burning wall, and we're just gonna be open firing. This is a truly wonderful sight as my men fire fire arrows. And once again, I think I told you before, but um, fire arrows are really not historically accurate in the sense that. Um, you might as well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's like by the times the by the time the actual arrow reached the enemy, the fire has already been put out. But once again, it has it is a very good good sight. As you can see, these Korean levy spearmen, which um, I targeted because they literally have no armor, are getting literally shot to death by my arrows. It is pretty it is pretty interesting as as you can see a hail of arrows fl flying at these towards these guys. Um, <laughs> they are they are dropping very quickly, and that is why I'm saying matchlocks are way better. Uh, ar archers are way better than matchlocks. Um, I think I also said in my last campaign um, that um, Benjamin Franklin also decided to um, deploy, use um, arc arrows in the American War Revolution, American Revolution, and the reason why he did that was because he um, uh, was because. He fought um, because they make no sound. But anyway, as you can see, uh, this guard spearman, or uh, sorry, no, this is not guard spearman of the Korean army. This is Poodle Pass spearman, um, and they're just getting literally evaporated <laughs> by my um, by my literally my archers. Uh, this armor is apparently not helping them survive against arrow fire. And yeah, you, these guys are just gonna get literally shot to death by my archers. Um, so yes, that's that. These guys, their numbers are dropping so quickly that um, I'm literally having to move my camera way too many times. One final volley and I decided to switch targets. And I'm gonna switch targets to the unit behind them which is a, a guard swordsman. But anyway, um, our guys have destroyed the tower, and now we're just gonna be moving through. Most of my units is made up of these spearmen, so um, they're good on the defense, not on the attack. And yeah, this battle is gonna be very um, bloody. Not only because Seoul is a large, not only is because Seoul is a large fortress, but because um, the enemy is pretty is not gonna give up. Like literally, um, this is their capital. So for some reason, I think they have a morale buff. Also, during this entire battle, you can see the enemy gets uh, way more kills than in some other settlements. Um, but my archers are doing their best to soften up the enemy. As you can see in the background, we are firing at the guard swordsmen, which are uh, an actual threat. Although for some reason, they are terrible against the other, my my actual swordsmen, which is weird. Um, I decided to have my men retreat for now because the uh, the Korean army. Koreans are just firing way too many arrows at this unit and I'm trying to get some cover. 
Um, the spearing unit is doing very well against my men, which is a problem uh, because they, uh, they, 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 they are literally a pain to deal with. Elsewhere, um, I'm trying to I cliff the walls and I'm just trying to charge against these guys. This poodle uh, pass um, in, uh, so, uh, spearman is pretty elite, but because I have more troops, um, we're going to be fighting a very long fight. I also, you also have to kind of realize this enemy unit is not breaking even if they have less than less than a tenth of their manpower. It is, it is pretty desperate and you can really see how desperate the Koreans are. They are not giving up, they are not surrendering. This is their capital. And it goes down to the very wire. This battle is not a joke. Like, these guys are not surrendering until I kill the very last of them, which I literally have to do. But anyway, um, to make it even worse, there are Korean archers firing at my position. Um, all across the board, my guys are trying, trying to go in. My spearmen are going against these levy swordsmen, which um, are dressed in white with blue black armor. My bad. Um, uh, enemy spearmen wearing their red are having are, are also going to be help uh, going to be useful against my men. But all across the board, my men are just charging straight through. Uh, we are taking heavy casualties, but so is too is the enemy. The enemy is not giving up, nor am I. I am desperately trying to take um, Seoul, which is the capital. And the second Seoul falls, we literally just um, destroy their capital. Well, we well, we won't destroy the capital, but we will literally um, we will win. Um, well, we will be literally across halfway through Korea. So yes, that's that. At this point, you can see the enemy has somewhat routed in in a sense. Um, I, what I come to find is that the very elite units will not route, while the levy units will start to route. Um, so yes, that's that. Um, we have been victorious and the enemy is running. Now the Koreans are sending in their guard swordsmen, and these guys are no joke. Um, you can see some of my guys falling. Uh, but for some reason, these guard swordsmen are not as good as my um, Thou swordsmen. And they're going to be suffering the consequence. They finally decide to route, which is uh, very pa uh, painful for the Koreans. Um, and that is the reason because it's simply this is one of their elite units, and uh, uh, most of their elite units are going to fight to the death. But this guard swordsman decides, nope, we're not going to be fighting to the death, and they literally run away, which opens a big hole in their lines, and that allows me to just march through. But for some reason, as I go deeper into the keep, the enemy is not going to be surrendering. As in this case, um, this archer unit, which um, is going to be tormenting my entire army for the entire time, is going to be fighting against these um, my own blue banner spearmen, and they're they're doing a good job of killing them. But um, but my guys are killing them faster. But they are not breaking. These guys will not break. Like literally, it is insane. It is like literally. Um, Soul is literally like defended by every last battle. Obviously, most of them are. Some of them are running, but the ones who are really committed are literally fighting to the death. And you can see me. Um, they're gonna eventually destroy this unit of blue banner spearmen, and that's gonna be sad because um, yeah, that's gonna be problematic. This was the same blue banner spearmen that um, that literally destroyed a poodle poodle pass um sort of spearmen that was down below. And as you can see in the distance, where our army is trying to run through here. Um, but this blue banner um, spearman will eventually just get get all uh, get themselves uh, killed, and um, like I said, this battle is extremely brutal for both sides. The enemy is not relenting, nor am I. I'm just sending men straight through the, to the battlefield, and yeah, it is not a good sign. Um, the good thing is that uh, Seoul is literally surrounded by all the provinces that are loyal to me. So yes, that's wonderful. Um, as you can see, the defenders are. For some reason, defenders are charging up at us like literally, like, like crazy, crazy men, and they're doing a lot of damage, which is, uh, which is terrifying at this point because this is just regular militia, and if they're about to do, they're like doing a lot of damage to my my guys, which are wearing armor and stuff like that. But yes, um, not to mention that uh, on the other side of the keep, uh, enemy is literally firing matchlocks. Um, at my guys, They're, the matchlocks are getting friendly kills, but for some reason the, the Koreans are not dissuaded. They're just uh, pouring even more troops 
Where's my guys? My guys are slightly being forced back. But, um, there's not much I can do about it. I'm just sending more men into the streets. Um, it doesn't help that, that my men have been fire, fighting this entire time and the enemy units are somewhat fresh. The enemy are charging straight towards us and we have, literally have nothing to do against them. And most of my men are get, getting dropped, uh, are getting killed, but um, I'm just sending more men in. Not that I can really rest or anything. The enemy is not allowing me to rest, which is smart. And not to mention the enemy is just, like literally going crazy. Literally charging at my men like they're literally throwing themselves on my troops, which is scary. Um, on the on the other side, uh, my blue banner spearmen have been destroyed. That is why I sent up this um, this um, out of ammunition green standard bowmen, and they're going to be duking it out with these archers. Once again, these archers are going to fight to the death. And yeah, it's not a good sight. Uh, eventually, they start running, but that's ha that's. Yeah, I kill the rest of them. The, the the ones that start running are instantly killed. So yeah, um, I'm gonna continue to march. I'm gonna take out that unit that's been firing at my men uh, from this wonderful position. So yes, we're gonna try our best to hold the line. Um, it takes a long time because my our troops are so tired. And it's gonna be taking a long time. But finally, when we do reach, it's gonna help. It's gonna pay out. So yes, that's that. Uh, the second we turn this corner, we're gonna try our best to hold them off, but um, well I cannot hold them off. They're gonna try their best to hold my guys off, but it's not a good sight, because once again, these guys are almost gonna fight to the death. Um, this, most of this, like literally this is a pretty bloody battle. Um, just by the sheer number of troops, the guys down there have um, their the, their fellow comrades down um, down this um, below this essentially this tier of wall. This wall is literally fighting to death. Like some troops have, for for some reason, this garrison army is getting a lot of kills, which is scary. Um, yeah, that is pretty scary. But um, it comes to show that um, when when possible, these Korean troops will fight to death, which is not a good thing. Um, yes, as you can see, this, this, this is just raging on, so I'm just gonna let, let you guys watch. Eventually, these guys decide to rout, but, um, I'm trying to kill as many as them to, to ensure that they will not come back. I like how I talk about, uh, how these Korean troops are not gonna be running away and then yet, some of them are running, are running away. But during this battle, most of the elite units don't run away, and it gave me such a headache. Um. Yes. Uh, down here, our guys are still fighting. Uh, the enemy is still fighting to the death. Um, I find a, a good way to make sure the enemy does not fight to the death is literally to um, literally attack them from the flank, which is uh, what I'm going to be doing right, right now my men, the green standard army, which I de literally deployed above this, um, which I flanked all across the way, is going to be coming down and charging the flank, but not for now. As of right now, these guys are trying their best to hold my guys off, and they've been doing a lot of damage, like this, this, th these two units have been doing a lot of damage. It's probably because one, they have, um, they're, they're being supported by, uh, matchlock, or were supported by, uh, matchlocks, and they're uphill. So our guys are fighting literally an up battle. But after that, uh, after seeing their um, their castle being taken, they they they, they surrendered and they're now routing. So yes, this battle was pretty damn bloody. Um, you can see a lot of my dead, a lot of the enemy dead, and literally just dead all across the board. So yes, that's pretty scary. You can see how tired my men are just by the way they walk, run, to be example. Uh, we've lost half of our army, the enemy lost their entire army. That is just to tell you how bloody this battle was. Like, um, There is no army that I have ever deployed, uh, unless it's a multiplayer battle, that have lost half of my army. That is pretty bloody. Um, yes. Um, this Korean army is going to be uh, painful to deal with, but uh, most of them are horses, so that's going to be fine. Uh, right here, um, I'm just trying to get more reinforcements to my main army. 
just trying to get them as quickly as possible. And um, technically now we can assault the fortress, but I am no in no mood to assault a fully defended fortress. That's pretty much. I'm pretty sure it's huge. Just saying. And yes, I'm gonna be sending more reinforcements. Um, what else can I get? I can also get more um, yellow. Yeah. Uh, I keep reaching the cap, but anyway, um, our economy is getting better and with 5,000 Koku, so yes, we're going to end the turn and see what the heck happens. The, the British want us to join the war against Awaji Sumoto, and they will be, they will be willing to join the war against Tagamashima, so that's interesting. Um, in South Gangwon, the Gangwon, the enemy is sally out, and because our army is completely massive, we're just going to massacre them. But um, anyway, I'm just going to show you the battle. Um, once again, I have a lot of these white border um, uh, swordsmen. Behind them, I have some archers, and the rest of them, the rest of my army is cavalry. So yes, that's that's one reason why I did not assault the place because literally, um, I don't. I don't think my cavalry is going to be doing a lot of damage, but yes. I do have these massive hordes of lancers, so that is pretty scary. Um, uh, sorry, not lancers, uh, Manchus uh, archers, mounted archers, so that is pretty scary. Um, yeah. Very scary indeed. If you're especially if you're if you're the enemy. The enemy is mostly made up speaking of the enemy, the enemy is mostly made up the this um militia uh gun militia. They're made up of some archers and literally behind them we have some Poodle Pass uh, spearmen. And it's pretty interesting how you can see these guys are like in the last battle of the Battle of Soul, these guys have have been very instrumental in holding the line. So yes, um, the entire the, the rest of the entire Korean army is just basically made up of levies, and I'm gonna try my best to attack them. Um, they are they decide to camp on this hill, and it's not a terrible idea. Just saying, but I decide to have one unit go on this hill, and we're just gonna be charging straight across against the enemy. Um, and the second we catch them in melee, it's game over. Uh, not to mention, at this point, my my entire cavalry, my entire cavalry is hitting the enemy in the back, um, and eventually they're gonna become storming down this hill, and against the spearmen. But yes, um, I have this one unit of white border units that is trying to cut off the escape of the enemy army, and during this battle, this unit actually got a lot of kills, although not being involved in most of the fighting. And the reason was simple. Um, the reason was because it was trying, to, it was cutting down the survivors. So that is why. Um, at this point, a lot of the enemy um, archers are just getting destroyed by my cavalry, which is just charging straight at them. At this point, there is a general rout among the, among the enemy, and now we're just going to be cutting the enemy down as quickly as possible. And um, in this one area, this unit gets some like 100 kills, so that is pretty interesting. Um, pretty dang scary, if you ask me. Um, yes. As you can see, at the end of this battle, we're just going to be running our cavalry around, killing the entire enemy garrison, and hopefully uh, capturing this place before, without another battle. Back on the campaign screen, the enemy lost pretty much their entire army, and we're gonna peacefully occupy. <laughs> um, um, yes, that's that. And to make the situation worse for me, the Hiroshima decided to sally out. Um, technically, we do have the advantage in terms of auto resolve, but I'm gonna fight this on battle on the battlefield. You can see I put most of my um, useful units, or um, how do I put it? Um, um, more healthy units in the front with uh, yellow banners, white banners, uh, all border banners, of course. And behind this uh, white banner, I, I, which is getting being hit by artillery at this point, uh, my I do have a red banner spearman, which is you can see right 
Now, um, behind them I literally have the depleted units, which are literally um, white banners. And yes, that is a depleted unit of 56. Um, not a lot. Actually, no, no, this is not 56. This is 76, and this one is 85. Uh, behind them, I have my Manchu, uh, my Manchu um, cavalry, and I'm going to use that very effectively because these guys will be my game savers. However, for some reason, um, these Manchu cavalry will not be present during most of the battle, and the reason is because I'm going to be using these to hunt down the enemy artillery, which is raining havoc on my troops right now. So off they go. The enemy army is mostly made of the spearmen, uh, gunmen, uh, militia, uh, mil uh, levies, and more spear levies. And we have ma matchlock levies, militia and uh, levies, and more spear levies. So a pretty professional army, but in terms of morale, they 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 suck. Um, I am going to be using a ridge against the enemy. And that is a that is somewhat of a poor decision on my part. But however, this is the only any sort of ridge. This is the only any type ridge that I'm gonna have. And the reason is simply because uh, there is no higher ground I can use. Um. And now we just have to pray for the best. That this ridge keeps us from getting shot at, which doesn't look like it is, because these men have stopped and they're preparing to fire. I do not know where they're going to be firing at, except for until you see the heads of some of my troops. Um, the enemy decides to charge in, which is um, a dumb idea because literally, why would you charge in like when you have literally your guns? Although your guns are terrible, you have a lot of them, and my units are pretty much depleted. Our guys charge in, and we do a lot of damage off the charge, and to make it even worse. Um, they blobbed up most of their troops, which makes the situation even better. Um, they pretty much lost the battle at this point. Um, my guys, although depleted, are pretty elite. Um, we're gonna be, um, trying our best to hunt the enemy down, essentially, at, the, at this point. Um, I'm trying to make sure the enemy does not open fire. Um, my yellow border, uh, swordsmen, which we haven't been seeing throughout most of the campaign, I'm gonna show you some of their battles, which is right here. Is just chopping these guys to pieces, and that is pretty much because the yellow banner, um, yellow border banner swordsmen are one of the best swordsmen. Um, historically, um, the yellow banner swordsmen are the best swordsmen in in terms of, well, the yellow banner border banner is one of the top three banners. The others being the the white banners and the yellow banners. So that is pretty scary. The white border banners are not that um, are not considered to be the top three. The yellow banners are the side. The white banners are, but not the white border banners. But anyway, we won the battle with only 200 casualties. We are going to peacefully occupy. And um, to my surprise, there is two armies that haven't joined the battle, which is weird. And they've decided to retreat and group up, which is not a bad idea. Anyway, all across the board, we <laughs> taken uh, a lot of provinces. We fought three battles in this um, turn, which is pretty impressive, all of which were pretty bloody. Especially for the enemy and for me in some cases. Um, I'm gonna have my um, agents assassinate this dude. Um, I'm pretty sure he's gonna be wrecking havoc on our guys. And let's see how the assassination fails. <laughs> the assassination fails, not that I really, uh, it really uh, matters. But um, now we've captured Seoul and South Gong 1. Now we, our only hope is to just press on. And for some reason, there is no massive Korean army that I feared. So that is a good sign. Um, yes, that's that. This army is pretty much depleted. Um, yes, this is a pretty bad sight. Um, I'm going to get more troops. And at this point, it's pretty much game over. So, well, no, it's pretty much not. It's pretty much game over for the Koreans. I crossed more than half their places, and now we have just... We're just gonna be uh, playing Conquer the Rest, and that's it. Um, um, once again, I'm just gonna be managing my provinces, but um, at this point, there's nothing much I can really do. Uh, my economy is doing pretty well. My fleet is trying to land, and we do land, but however, it is in the winter, so that means my men will be taking winter attrition. 
But um, these guys are really needed at the front line, so yes, that's that. Um, yes, this army is pretty massive. Um, however, it does need to replenish, and I'm gonna move on to Aki, but not in this turn because um, this episode is about to come to an end. As a matter of fact, it's gonna be less than one minute, so yes, that's that. Um, all across the board, people are happy. Well, actually, no, not that happy, especially not in Japan. In Korea, uh, the northern provinces uh, beyond near my border are happy, but um, elsewhere it's not happy. But however, I did destroy, I did capture Seoul, so that should make their morale suck. But anyway, um, this is pretty much the end of the episode, so have a great day, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll see you in the next one. Now before you leave, I would like to thank you very much for watching this video. I would be honored if you could like and subscribe to the channel. Remember, more videos are coming out, so it is a good idea to click on that notification button. Anyways, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.